What's going on Cougar fans? Peter Borkowski here on the Cougar Sports Network coming at you with another edition of Coaches Weekly. I'm once again joined by Coach Campbell of CUC Women's Volleyball Team. Coach, welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? Great. After a pretty good weekend, so yeah, feeling pretty good. Well, let's jump right into it. You guys started your season this weekend. You were at the DePaul Invite in Greencastle, Indiana. Now, you guys dropped your first three matches of the weekend, but you ended it on a high note with a victory against Kalamazoo. Maybe just speak on some of your general takeaways from this weekend now that you've seen your team in official action. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, when we booked this tournament, we knew that it was going to be a higher level tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, Carthage is traditionally really highly ranked. So is DePaul and Albion was the best team there. Mm -hmm. And they had 20 plus wins last year. So and we were the only team to take a game from Albion in the entire tournament. So and we played fantastic in that game. And then we took DePaul to five in the second day, made some adjustments and came back and played uh, really tough. And we lo obviously lost that game, but less than 30 minutes later, we were playing Kalamazoo and we could have had a letdown there. We could have had like a, a major emotional letdown and we didn't. We just came through and played Kalamazoo really tough like we played all the other teams. And, and overall, I think it was a fantastic weekend for our development overall. Mm -hmm. And the results on paper, at least, got better as the weekend went along, which you kind of spoke to. You started off with being swept by Carthage, which again is a very, very tough team to play. Picked up a set against Albion, picked up two cents against DePaul, and then finally ended with a sweep against Kalamazoo. Did you kind of get the sense that as the weekend went along, your team kind of settled into things more? They got more comfortable maybe playing with each other, playing on the court? Because at least on paper, that's what the results paint. Yeah, I think so. I think you got to take the level of, of uh, competition as well. Like, mm -hmm. like I told the girls, um, there were teams this weekend that got wins that probably shouldn't be on the court with us. And we could play in a tournament like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we could sit and play in a tournament where we're going to get four straight wins mm -hmm. and seek that opportunity out. Or we could seek out this opportunity where we're going to be tested against great teams and they're going to expose about us things that we need to change. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we needed to be ultimately. And, you know, you look at the top teams in our conference, they didn't go undefeated this past weekend because they played in tough tournaments. And that's where we needed to be too if we're going to go to the next level. So, and Kalamazoo was just, uh, I think they were big and physical. Mm -hmm. They just were the wrong matchup for us. Like we're all passing and defense and serving. And uh, that's the area in which they have to improve a lot to be able to be successful. And we're already there. Right. So we were able to take advantage of all those opportunities. But the, the progress that we made overall in the weekend, I think is going to show when we get into the middle of our season. Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of individual players, one who had a really strong performance this weekend was your setter, Isabel Vernango. She led the team in assists in every game, as she usually does. She had 20-plus in three of the four games, including a whopping 36 against DePaul. You spoke on her last week a little bit about how she's going to be really key in trying to achieve what you're trying to accomplish as coach. She was an all-NAC honorable mention last year as well. I'm sure seeing her strong play this weekend was a good sign of things to come for you. Can you maybe expand on what you talked about last week about the role she's going to play on the team this year? Yeah, I think that obviously being a captain and our setter overall, I think there's a lot of responsibility that comes along with that that isn't just touching the ball. It's a mm. lot about how our team uh, plays and interacts and all of that stuff. And I think she's done a fantastic job of making sure that she's taking care of business there. But uh, quite frankly, and this is things that we talked about the last two days of practice, our offense was not great. Mm -hmm. We hit zero on the weekend, no matter what we were doing, and we were still competitive with teams even though we hit zero, and yeah. she's a part of that. Not only in set location, but decision making. So in all of those areas, we're going to try to get a lot better, okay. and over the weekend, she got a lot better at the little details too. Like gotcha. We had some serving issues uh, earlier in the week, and uh, she took some cues and really served fantastic against DePaul and that was part of it like her and JB both uh, served extremely well in those games when they had been struggling a little bit to get back in the groove so and we have to understand like I said it's only been two weeks and we're trying to incorporate four new attackers into an offense right and that is tough when you're playing great competition and of Lake course. Forest was tough 
and uh, they had a great weekend this weekend. I think they went uh, two and one or three and zero. Oh. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we played this great competition this weekend that exposed a lot of stuff that we need to change. But anyway, it's uh, she did a fantastic job. JB did too. Grace had a great weekend. Stonich had a great weekend. Right. If we don't have those girls playing well uh, at our core, then uh, you know we're going to struggle. But they did a great job. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys have a couple more days until you're back in action this Friday. The Wheaton College invite begins. You'll play Beloit and Wheaton on Friday, finish things off against Loris on Saturday. It'll be about a week in between the two invites. What this weekend is going to signify a step in the right direction for your team? What are you really wanting to see out of them before we get into conference play? Well, I think uh, making sure that we're not taking a step backwards in serve, receive, and defense and pass. Okay. So, or um, uh, serving. So we need to make sure that we're maintaining our level there because mm. we, against our competition this weekend, we won all of those statistical categories. Against uh, all three of our competitors and us, we outdueled them in every one of those. But we have to improve in blocking and attacking. So okay. um, hopefully we're able to take those steps forward this weekend and get our uh, defensive side of the ball and our offensive side of the ball closer in connection mm. um, so that they're playing at similar levels. It, even if we hit, uh, I mean, honestly, if we hit 125, we would have been in the Albion match uh, better. Okay. You know, it would have been a closer match even right. though we won one uh, game and we I think we had seven or eight blocks in one game, mm. uh, which was fantastic for us, especially against a team of their caliber. So. Uh, yeah, we're just hoping to take those necessary steps to get our offense where we need to be and uh, maintain that level of uh, defense. Mm -hmm. I mentioned it just a second ago, but conference play already begins next week. And this is kind of your, this weekend kind of represents a final tune-up before you get to the games that really, really do matter. Yeah. Could you maybe speak on and expand upon like the importance of these non-conference games? Again, obviously, when it comes to playoff time, it's the conference wins and losses that really matter. But obviously, there's still some importance to going to invites like you're at this past weekend and like you'll be at this upcoming weekend. Yeah, exactly. I just think that, um, you know, when you're there to, I think this was perfect for us. Like last weekend and this weekend, it will be perfect for us. I think that we're pretty comparable to the teams that we're going to be playing this weekend as far as what they did this last weekend and what we did and the competition that they played. So I'm hoping that we can start to make in-game adjustments like uh, like a pro team. Okay. Right? Like I gotcha. we need to make play-by-play uh, -play adjustments to adjust to what they're doing. Okay. And that takes a lot of volleyball IQ. Definitely, and right. And I'm hoping that we become a little better with that. Because teams are going, especially in conference, when you know each other so well, mm -hmm. um, they're going to make in-game adjustments according to what we're doing, and we need to make the adjustment ahead of them. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we're able to make some progress in that too, because once everybody figures out who we are, they're going to be practicing that all week. Right. And we just need to make sure that we're ahead of the game in that aspect, and okay. I think we could be super successful. I think... Conference-wide, when you look at our, even through the first weekend, and obviously we have another weekend to go before we hit it, but uh, our results were really good compared to the rest of our conference mm -hmm. uh, with the competition that we played. So I'm uh, really enthused about what we're going to be able to do next week. IIT is undefeated right now, mm -hmm. and they played some decent competition. Right. So, um, you know, hopefully we're able to uh, give them a good match at their place and eke out the win. Okay, definitely. Well, once again, CEC Women's Volleyball back in action this Friday at the Wheaton College Invite. They'll play Beloit and the host Wheaton at 6 and 8 p.m. respectively. Coverage for those two, as well as all things women's volleyball here at Concordia, can be found at cucougars.com. One more thanks to Coach Campbell for joining me today. We'll have another chance to talk in about a week or so. Until then, this is Peter Borkowski signing off of the Cougar Sports Network and wanting to say, as always, go Cougars.